Hello, my name's Carly Brinkman and I wanted to share my opinions and response to the government's draft domestic abuse bill. So there has been consultation, research and communication between charities, survivors and those that have experienced it firsthand. And it's monumental. I'm so excited to see that this has gained momentum and have unbelievable gratitude for those that have been working with this firsthand, those brave and courageous women and men who have shared their experiences. So the big things for me after researching the bill today that I found really important, encouraging and motivating is quite, well, quite a lot of things. Um, but the big things were the idea that in family courts, perpetrators can't cross-examine the victim, which is huge. Equally, the other part that was really important for me as someone who has survived and experienced domestic abuse was the idea of the economic abuse that can occur in relationships and also the manipulative behaviour that can be used by the perpetrator on the victim. And this is huge. So the Home Office um, started to look into the financial cost of domestic abuse in England and Wales and realised that it cost, cost society £66 billion. Pounds. So it's very important and we need to recognise that not only does domestic abuse cost a huge amount of money, but it costs lives. Two women, it's estimated, are lost due to domestic abuse per week. And this is not saying that domestic abuse doesn't occur or men don't experience it. But as a female, I'm just sharing what my experience is and the information that I've found. So I wanted to share with you my experience of domestic abuse um, from first-hand experience and where I am now and how I view it. So my domestic abuse occurred in the second year of university. During the first year of university, my dad passed um, two months when I first started university unexpectedly from his fifth heart attack. My mum at the time was unable to process this and was, an emotion and was emotionally unavailable for myself and my younger siblings. So I went home for my dad's funeral and returned to university two weeks later. My mum was finding it very difficult to manage day to day and my older sister took charge and started to coordinate with my mum, my siblings and um, agencies to support the family. Now, consciously or not unconsciously, we carry a lot of I ams around with us. And throughout my life, life I've masked I ams very well by being successful in different ways, as in doing reasonably well at school, academically, doing well outside of school, attending drama, um, you know, doing well in sports disciplines as well. So it showed the outside world that I was well but I was achieving my esteem and confidence from things exterior to me. My underlying I am's were I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable, I'm not deserving and I am responsible. I had some good underlying views and beliefs from the world that you know everybody is fundamentally good but also when you marry up some of the thoughts beliefs with another one that's not conducive to each other such as I believe that everyone is fundamentally good so you seek out the best in everyone but when you marry that up with something that I am responsible for someone then you can be in difficult territory. So fast forward to my second year of university I had very low self-esteem I was very vulnerable but not many people knew that I was masking that with um, overworking overeating and over drinking but holding everything together because that's what you do like you know life's hard everybody has difficulties just get on with it another belief just get on with it like you know like how he says life's meant to be easy so I carried on then in a club I met um a gentleman sorry I'm a bit shaky my legs just started shaking there I met a young man who was very handsome I didn't believe I was very attractive he was very confident I wasn't very confident 
he was very charming. I didn't think I was very charming. And um, we started a relationship. At the beginning, he was very charming and he was an escape from my reality. Um, my devastation at home, my devastation of not being there for my family. And he showed me what I believed was love. And it was slowly, um, slow, the manipulati- manipulation and the abuse. And when I've spoken to friends after the event, and when I finally escaped the abuse, they didn't believe me. On the outside, I was quite frantic, quite energetic, enthusiastic, would forget things, a bit distracted. That's now that I realised I was running on cortisol and adrenaline and my body wasn't getting the necessary you know, nutrients to keep itself going. And I'd been running, like, running on adrenaline and cortisol for years. Um, and he was very intelligent, very calculating, had a great memory. And everything became my fault. First of all, little things and things he was saying. Then I started to isolate myself um, from my friends, my family. I then became an one, but for him, nothing was for me anymore. One, an opportunity to represent my university. And then you look back, I was paying for everything. Money started to go missing. Um, He started with the abuse mentally. This is why I was so happy when I heard about the proposals for the new um, d- domestic abuse bill. Um, I was ugly. Um, I was going out so men would just find me attractive. He was coming home and I was disgusting. Um, one of the things I look back now, clothes went missing. I found them in the bin. He had shat on my clothes. I, just saying it now, he had used my clothes to wipe his bottom with. And what did I do? I took him back. Um, but he hid it very well. He told his parents, his mum, that he um, had a degree. It was lie after lie after lie. It it, it was crazy. Um, but I didn't see it. I felt it was my fault. My underlying belief was everything was my fault. And this carried on physical, emotional, um, economic, everything. I had it. I had it. And then something one day I left. But then I was left with the damage of having to face me. I didn't want to tell anyone because I felt embarrassed. I was an intelligent girl. I was at university. I was strong. This meant I was weak. And I remember having a conversation with a family member going out one night when I was still with him saying, he's telling me to come home. I I, I, I can't come home because I'm working. And then the family member saying, well, just tell him to leave you alone. And it's embarrassing that as what you identify yourself with and what you become is so devastating it's and then picking up the pieces after that and then you start to weave things that don't support you again and there there was a misalignment with my beliefs as in like attracts like so he's a narcissist or displayed traits I mean labels sometimes can be helpful and sometimes they're not so he was an individual that displayed those traits and like attracts like well does that mean that I am And then it was horrendous. And then it's the numbing of the hurt and the pain. Carrying on, I've got to be strong. Not having time because other things and people in my life needed my support. And the more I wasn't addressing the I am's of who I was, the more of those types of people I was attracting, those I am's in my energy and my vibrations were reflecting back to me. But I didn't know how to deal with it but I have and I have I have and it's taken time but I am the more you become aware the more support you seek the more you trust and it's hard when you come out and when you're in it and I understand there'll be many people watching that's still in it there'll be many people that have just come out of it and there'll be many people that are building up their shattered lives and the trust there are people you can trust out there and when you give your trust to someone and you don't even trust yourself anymore when your home your actual home physical home's not safe and then your home inside is not safe where's safe anymore and you give your love unconditionally to someone and that's not safe but i'm still here and the more research i do and the more I 
love myself unconditionally and forgive myself, the tiny little steps are showing me that anything is possible. And I will add all the links underneath me for charities, uh, websites, support, whatever stage of the process and journey you're in or going through at the moment. And I just wanted to offer anybody a glimmer of hope. I can't change it. I can't take it away. But all I can show you is hope. That's all. Whew. Because I am strength. I am hope. And I am love. And so are you. You are brave. You are courageous. And you deserve unconditional love. So please seek support. Please, if there's any element in you, listen. <laughs> I'm talking to you. All of you. And life can be beautiful when you start taking those tiny steps. <sniffs> Sorry, sniffing. It's, it really irritates me when people sniff. And there's another one just for annoyance. Anyway, I wish you all the love. Like I said, I am strength, I am hope, and I am love, and so are you. Good luck. Stay strong, because you are strong. Much love. <laughs>